Hey everyone, today we're going to go over the engineering design process. We're going to talk about what is engineering design, what is an engineering design process. Uh, we're going to go through some examples and then we're going to discuss in a lot more detail the process we're going to use in PoE. When a lot of people think about design, they think about uh, creating something, and it could be anything. Uh, for example, you might hear someone say, well, I designed that piece of art, or I like that person's design uh, for their home, or what have you. But in this class, we're talking specifically about engineering design. And in here, we're really talking about design as it pertains to solving problems. Now, I like what this slide says about the design process, uh, and I would just change it just a little bit. So the ITEA, which is a, a, a teacher thing, it's, it's standards for technological literacy. It's one of the standards that I follow in, when I teach this class. It says that a design process is a systematic problem-solving strategy with criteria and constraints, very important, used to develop many possible solutions to solve or satisfy human needs or wants and to narrow down the possible solutions to one final choice. Um, I agree with that. I think the only thing I would change is you can really solve anything. It doesn't have to be just human needs or wants. I think you can use it to solve just about any problem. Now there's more than one design process. They share a lot in common and we're going to take a look at some examples now. So here's the textbook, uh, Design and Problem Solving in Technology. Um, it has nine different steps. A um, couple of things. The first thing is you identify a problem, you investigate and you do some research, you generate alternative solutions, model and prototype, and you test. And then of course you can redesign and improve. Let's take a look at some more. Here's another engineering textbook, although this is engineering drawing and design. Again, you can see there are nine steps. You identify the need in this case, not the problem. Uh, you have to understand it. Those two kind of go together. Generate solutions, make a prototype, and test it. So you can kind of see some similarities between the first and second examples. Well, here's another one from ITEA. This one has 12 steps. Again, you define the problem. Brainstorming is really generating ideas, uh, and that you combine that with the research. You make a proposal, you make a prototype, and you test it. Uh, but here it talks about communicating. So if we take that and have it look a little bit like uh, a little bit more graphic it kind of looks like this so you will find this and we will use uh, a mini version of this in our class and in PLTW we're gonna take the process we just saw with the 12 steps and we're just gonna simplify it a little bit um, it's still going through the same process but we're just putting some things together so we're gonna define the problem generate concepts and develop a solution then we're gonna make a prototype evaluate that solution and then communicate it so the design process in PoE is an example of one process so you saw on the other slides that we had seen a couple of processes that had nine steps so it's an important thing to know that there are lots of different processes that are out there um, but they do have a lot of things in common so I want to present this to our class because I want to make sure that we're consistent in what we're doing so the first step is to define the problem and well what does that mean you have to first of all identify that it's a problem uh, and then we say validate the problem so who says that it's a problem is it just the fact that you don't like the pink skateboard you got for Christmas and you want to make it blue well okay that's not really a problem that might be something you want um, you want to take a look at is it uh, something that's needed or something that's wanted and then finally you also want to look at prior solutions which is engineering code for does a solution already exist can you go to Walmart or Home Depot and buy that solution then finally you want to take a look at is it worth solving 
I mean, we could build a, a ladder to the moon. I mean, we could we could theoretically do that. We can build something that's 250,000 miles long or high, but is it worth it? Probably not. Finally, then you want to look at what exactly do you want it to do. Um, so very important, very important word here, specifications. A specification is really a requirement um, and the criteria and constraints those are the boundaries um, and you have to really understand those to define the problem in other words uh, does your problem have a weight limitation does it have to be less than 10 pounds does it have to fit inside a bread box um, does it have to go 50 miles an hour uh, as a minimum those kinds of things you have to understand what those are finally you put those all of those together in one document and it's red here to indicate that it's a deliverable. So that's called a design brief, and it has all of these things. So a design brief is really, by definition, it's a written plan that identifies the problem and its criteria and constraints. Um, and it's usually a really short document that's used as the, uh, the guiding document during your uh, engineering design process. So then we have to ask ourselves a question once we've defined it and we've written our design brief. Um, is the problem valid? Uh, is it justifiable? Um, if it's not, then we really don't have a solvable problem. And if we don't have a solvable problem, then we're going to have to go back and redefine it. But if we do, then let's take a look at uh, how we generate some concepts. And this is one of my favorite parts because we get to do some research and you will do all of these things during our projects. Brainstorming. Brainstorming is the most fun thing. That's where I used to close the door and uh, we would get together in a big group and we'd have donuts and coffee and pizza. And we'd, sometimes we'd be in the room for hours. Sometimes we'd be in there for weeks. And there's no such thing as a stupid idea. It's all about generating the quantity of ideas, not the quality of ideas. So you won't hear anyone say, unless they're breaking the rules, well, that's a really dumb idea because there is no such thing. You also want to consider, you know, are there additional design goals? There might be some, and then you want to apply some, apply some STEM principles. Um, for example, you've all taken chemistry, and you might want to apply the ideal gas loss, for example. Uh, that is one thing that I used to do a lot of in my aerospace career, uh, apply those principles. Then you kind of want to figure out how you want to approach it. Once you've generated all of these ideas, you're going to document them uh, in a decision matrix. And a decision matrix is really just a tool. Um, it can be a spreadsheet. It can be, uh, it's usually a chart or a table that looks like this. And on, uh, you can switch the columns in the rows if you want, but along one side, you're going to have all of your different ideas. Now you're going to take, this has six. So you might've come up with 300 ideas. So you're going to debate those 300 ideas with you and your team and come up with what you think are the best six. And then across the top here, you're going to have your criteria and constraints. And then you're going to rate each design idea for each um, criteria and constraint. So for example, if I'm looking at idea number three on complexity, it has a score of two. Well, what does two mean exactly? You have to define what two means. So here down at the bottom, you see the scale. So one is worst, four is best, and two is, well, it's not the worst, but it's not the best either. So it's kind of a low score. Then at the end, you add up all the scores, and the idea with the highest score is usually, not always, usually the winner, and that's going to be your best idea. Once you've done that, you're going to want to take a look at, you know, can you really make this thing? You know, you might have uh, something that uh, you might have a software problem. Well, do you know how to write software? And if you don't, maybe you should learn or find someone that does. Um, we can't teleport things yet. You can't teleport a, a box from here to Cincinnati. So if that's part of your design, 
probably need to revisit that. So you either need some scientific research or go back and redefine your problem. Well, once we have a, a great concept and the technology exists and we can make it, we've defined that problem, we're going to develop our solution. So here's where we're really going to literally um, you could put pencil to paper, but if you took IED, this is where you're going to create your detailed drawings. In engineering, we call them technical drawings. And because it's in red, that's the deliverable for the develop the solution. So in here, in your drawings, you're going to provide all the information that's necessary. All You're going to provide the, provide the front, top, and other views. You might provide cutaway views everything required a complete bill of materials and even how to assemble it how to make it so again you ask yourself can i make this is it valid you're probably going to work with some people in manufacturing and say well you know here's this idea we have can can you make this if they say no then you are going to have to go back to one of the previous steps and create a new solution. So once you've developed your solution, you've talked to manufacturing, you know you can make it, it's a great concept, it's a valid problem, then you're going to want to make your prototype. So you're going to have to have a plan for that and you're going to have to have a big plan for testing. Uh, and your testing is going to be tied to way back in the beginning when you came up with your specifications. So it has to be built around your criteria and constraints. Um, if it has to go 50 miles an hour, you better have a test that measures speed. Your deliverable here is going to be uh, a test report. So you're going to collect all the data. You're going to analyze it and write a really nice summary. And you're going to tell your customers, your boss, your fellow engineers, yes, this is a good thing. Or not. Then you're going to want to ask yourself, is this, after you look at your test results, is this prototype valid? Did it test um, well? Did it pass all of the tests? And if it didn't, then you're going to have to go back to one of the previous uh, steps in the process and it's important to to note here that you can go back to step three or step one you have to figure out which is the most appropriate step step five is evaluating the solution so let's really take a look at it was it effective did it do what we wanted it to do or in fact can we do better um, you probably can do better because nothing ever works the way it's supposed to work when you first make it. You might find that you have you need a different spring or a different material. There's all kinds of things that can happen that you can improve upon. And you'll find that as we go through all the design projects in our class. Here, the deliverable is the project recommendations report. So that could be in various forms. And we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. So does it solve the problem? If not, again, you have to go back to one of the previous steps. Finally, you're going to take your evaluation and your recommendations, and you're going to put together a project portfolio. The hint here is that it's red, so it must be a deliverable. So project portfolio is that collection. Really think of your engineering notebook the way it should be used. You're going to have all of your, your test data, everything from step one all the way through step five, and what you did along the way. Now, project portfolio might have some of the, the highlights, depending on how you want to present it. Then you're also going to give some sort of formal presentation, and it's going to depend on the situation. If you are a consultant working for a client, you're going to give that presentation to the client and probably going to be several people in that meeting. Um, or it could just be you're doing a project for your company, in which case you give it to your boss and maybe his boss and so on. One thing that's really, really important 
uh, and I skipped all the animations here. Really important about this process is if you, you look at it, uh, it looks linear. It's straight up and down when in fact I can go, if I find that the answer is no to any of these questions, I can go back to, so for example, if I find after I construct and test my prototype that is it valid? No. I can go back to three or I can go back to two or one, wherever makes sense. That's totally, totally up to you. And then finally, after step six, are we really done? Probably not. And here's why I say that. Think about the car. Think about the just, well, the society that we live in and, and how the car fits into this process. So we're never really done with the design. If you think about, we all, uh, we know Henry Ford. He's the guy that uh, has, still has a company named after him, and he created the, the Model T back in the late 20s. Well, do we still drive Model Ts? No, absolutely we don't. That's because we've continued uh, to improve upon that design. So he's innovated that product, and we didn't just jump from the Model T to the Taurus or a minivan. There were a lot of little changes along the way, lots and lots of problems to be defined and solved. So product design in the real world isn't just something that's one and done. It's a continuous, continuous process. Thank you.